The prostate is a fibromuscular gland of the male reproductive system, located under the bladder, in front of the rectum, and near the pelvic floor. Under normal conditions, the prostate gland has the shape of a walnut or a chestnut, but over the years or due to certain pathologies, it can swell up to the point of causing some disturbances, especially of the urinary type. We speak of benign prostatic hypertrophy, that is when the prostate increases in volume, until it reaches two, three times larger than normal. In reality, we should speak of hyperplasia, as the enlargement of the prostate is due to an increase in the cells that constitute it, in particular of the prostate epithelial and stromal cells, and to the formation of nodules. As the name itself suggests, it is therefore a benign pathology, as the enlargement of the prostate is not due to the growth of a tumor mass. In the last video, however, which you can find by clicking here above, we saw what the early symptoms of prostate cancer are. Malignant neoplasm more frequent in the male gender and responsible for about 40,000 new diagnoses in Italy every year. Benign prostatic hyperplasia affects about 50% of men over 50 and reaches up to 80-90% in 80-year-olds. Symptoms of benign prostatic hyperplasia the intensity of symptoms of benign prostatic hyperplasia depends on the mass of the gland and the tone of the smooth muscles of the bladder neck and prostate. In some men the symptoms are mild, while in others they are so annoying that they significantly worsen the quality of life. Among the main symptoms, we find a difficulty in starting to urinate and a frequent need to urinate. This happens because when the prostate enlarges, the excess tissue compresses the bladder and urethra. Musculomembranous canal that runs vertically through the prostate to carry urine from the bladder to the outside of the body. Thus, a constant need to urinate will be felt both day and night up to urinary incontinence, medical condition in which the involuntary loss of small amounts of urine occurs. Another symptom of benign prostatic hyperplasia is difficulty emptying the bladder completely. This happens because the bladder is forced to do too much work to expel the accumulated urine and consequently weakens over time, becoming less efficient. Failing to empty completely, there will always be a small amount of urine which increases the risk of contracting infections or the formation of stones, as well as being responsible for an annoying sensation of incomplete emptying of the bladder after having finished urinating. Other symptoms of benign prostatic hyperplasia are the presence of blood in the urine and terminal dripping or post-urination. That is when urine residues remain at the level of the urethra at the end of urination and continue to leak. However, the symptoms of an enlarged prostate are comparable to those of prostate cancer. The only test able to identify with certainty the cause of urinary disorders is the prostate biopsy, a diagnostic test that allows to examine some samples of prostate tissue under the microscope, previously taken from the gland, in order to search for the possible presence of cancer cells. The Italian National Institute of Health remember that benign prostatic hyperplasia does not increase the risk of developing prostate cancer. How is the diagnosis made? The diagnosis of benign prostatic hyperplasia occurs during a urological examination with rectal exploration, that is an internal examination of the rectum, in which the doctor introduces his gloved index finger into the patient's anus to evaluate the volume and consistency of the prostate. Another test is the dosage of PSA, an acronym for prostate-specific antigen, in which a simple blood sample measures the amount of PSA, an enzyme produced by the prostate gland, which has the task of making the seminal fluid more fluid. Under normal conditions, it is present in the blood in small quantities, but in the case of benign prostatic hyperplasia or prostate cancer, its levels can increase. Another test that allows you to evaluate the morphology of the prostate is transrectal ultrasound. It is an instrumental diagnostic test in which a long, thin probe is inserted into the patient's anus and through the sound waves that the device emits, images of the prostate are obtained, which are then reproduced on a computer screen. Causes of Benign Prostatic Hyperplasia 
The causes of benign prostatic hyperplasia are not yet fully known, but it is believed to be due to hormonal changes that occur as a man ages. We know that men produce testosterone, the male hormone, and small amounts of estrogen, the female hormone. As a man ages, the amount of active testosterone in the blood decreases, making room for a higher percentage of estrogen. This hormonal imbalance, according to some studies, can favor the enlargement of the prostate. Other possible causes include an increase in the levels of dehydrotestosterone, a biologically active metabolite of the hormone testosterone. In simpler words, it is a hormone that derives from the transformation of testosterone thanks to the intervention of a particular enzyme known as 5-alpha reductase. Dehydrotestosterone is produced by males already in the maternal uterus and plays an important role in the development of secondary male sexual characteristics, such as the appearance of body hair and lowering of the tone of voice. However, when it is present in the body in large quantities, it can favor the onset of benign prostatic hyperplasia, or prostate cancer. Among the risk factors of prostate enlargement we find diabetes and heart disease, an incorrect lifestyle, obesity, and the inevitable aging. Some studies have also highlighted the existence of a genetic predisposition and familiarity in the development of benign prostatic hyperplasia, with a greater risk of suffering from it if you have a relative in the family with prostate problems. Treatment of Benign Prostatic Hyperplasia the guidelines dictated by the Italian National Institute of Health provide for three different types of treatment for benign prostatic hyperplasia, the choice of which depends on the severity of the pathology and therefore of the symptoms. Lifestyle changes. In the case of mild symptoms, it is sufficient to monitor the prostate over time and limit the consumption of caffeine and alcohol, two substances that can irritate the bladder and worsen urinary disorders. Pharmacological therapy. In the case of disorders ranging from moderate to severe, as well as improving one's lifestyle, it is also necessary to follow long-term drug therapy, which must always be prescribed by a specialist. Among the drugs administered, we find finasteride and dutasteride, which serve to block the 5-alpha reductase enzyme, which we said is responsible for the conversion of testosterone into dihydrotestosterone. Thanks to the 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, the size of the prostate is slightly reduced by about 10-15%. Among the other drugs administered we find alpha blockers, which have the task of relaxing the muscles of the prostate and bladder, consequently improving the urinary flow. Surgical Intervention in the most serious cases, the last resort is surgery, and it is used in case of ineffectiveness of drug therapy. The most effective intervention for the treatment of benign prostatic hyperplasia is the transurethral resection of the prostate, and consists in introducing a particular instrument called resectoscope through the urethra. It is a sort of endoscope, equipped with a light source, a camera connected to an external monitor, and a small metal ring. The latter emits a high-frequency electric current that allows the surgeon to dissect and remove the excess tissue that lines the prostate gland. Alternatively can use a holmium laser, whose name derives from the magnetic properties of the chemical element used, holmium, which allows to remove excess prostate tissue using a high-energy laser beam. It is one of the most innovative therapies for the treatment of benign prostatic hypertrophy and has shorter hospitalization and recovery times than the traditional surgical technique, called open prostatectomy, in which an incision is made on the abdomen to remove excess prostate tissue responsible for urinary disorders. <laughs>